intent of this video is to review the B-17 bomber's oxygen system, gear, and components. The B-17 cabins were unpressurized. To maintain life at high altitude flight, crew members must be dispensed supplemental oxygen. Crew members were instructed to don oxygen masks at altitudes above 10,000 feet or at night. If a crew member's oxygen system failed at 30,000 feet, the crew member will suffer anoxia and lose consciousness in about a minute, and death will occur in about 20 minutes. Because of this, intercom oxygen checks were conducted every 15 minutes, starting with the tail gunner and working forward. If a crew member failed to respond, assistance would be provided. Let's start with the B-17 crew's oxygen gear. There were various types of oxygen masks adopted by the bomber crews. The A-14 mask, shown here, was the most prevalent. The A-14 mask snapped to a leather helmet located under the M3 flak helmet. The oxygen mask hose was connected to an A-12 on-demand oxygen regulator. The oxygen regulator ensured that the correct ambient air oxygen mixture was fed to the crew member. Oxygen flow gauges were located at each one of the crew stations. The gauges included a blinker, a pressure gauge, and a low pressure warning light. The blinker provided a visual cue that the oxygen was flowing as it blinked while the crew member took a breath. The oxygen pressure gauge was normally operating at 400 PSI. The oxygen warning light would il be illuminated if the oxygen system pressure fell below 100 PSI. If a crew member needed to disconnect from the plane's A-12 regulator, he could connect his oxygen hose to a portable A-4 walk-around bottle. The walk-around bottle could be clipped directly to his flak vest and would provide about eight minutes worth of oxygen. Here we have a B-17 crew member traversing the Bombay catwalk with a walk-around bottle in hand. Crew member may pass out if parachuting out at high altitude. Therefore, some crew members chose to bring an H-1 bailout bottle. An H-1 bailout bottle would be strapped to his leg or parachute harness. The bottle consisted of a small, high-pressure oxygen tank, a long feeder hose, and an end nipple. Prior to jumping out of the B-17, a crew member would bite on the bottle's feeder, hose, and nipple, turn on the bottle's valve, and then jump. For redundancy, the B-17's oxygen system consisted of four independent subsystems. If one of the systems failed, a crew member could tap into any of the other functioning subsystems. The graphic shows the location of the plane's oxygen cylinders, walk-around bottles, and the four independent oxygen subsystems. B-17 is stocked with 18 G-1 oxygen cylinder. Each of the G-1 cylinders would provide four hours of oxygen for one crew member at 30,000 feet. The cylinders are constructed of a thin, high-grade steel and are designed to be burst resistant. The oxygen cylinders are fabricated with external hoop and longitudinal tear straps. If the pressurized cylinders are damaged, then oxygen will leak as a controlled decompression and not catastrophically explode. We call that a leak before burst design criteria. Earlier B-17's ball turret gunner's oxygen system consisted of one or two of the smaller F-1 oxygen cylinders mounted on the turret framing. These needed to be refilled by the waste gunner since each one of these cylinders only contained enough oxygen for about two hours of usage. The B-17's oxygen flow diagram. First, oxygen gas starts in the F1 400 PSI tanks. From there, it is carried by oxygen lines, which contain junction check valves. Think of check valves as one-way safety valves in case the system is damaged. Oxygen will not backflow into the damaged part of the systems. The oxygen will then flow through the pressure gauge, blinker, low pressure indicator light, and regulator. From there, the oxygen flows into the crew member's mask. 
see a B-17 crew position with a stowed A-4 walk-around bottle, oxygen system line with check valve, and oxygen panel.